What about you, whiskey lovers? And welcome to another episode of Whiskey Straight with me, Big Al. Today, it's all about an entry level single malt scotch, the Glenmore Elgin Classic. And it is both easy on the palate and easy on the wallet, which is pretty damn good. And it's what you want, particularly at difficult times like we're in now. And I think it's also a good dram to introduce to your non whiskey drinking mates who just don't quite get whiskey. This is a good one to try them on, to introduce them to whiskey, to wing them into it so that they can come on side, see the light, and start drinking a proper spirit. Now the Elgin Classic is the Glen Murray Distillery's signature malt and as the name would suggest is part of the classic range. But before we get into doing the nosing and the tasting, here are the relevant details about the whiskey. It's from Speyside, it's a single malt, it's aged on average 7 years and axe bourbon casks and it's bottled at 40% ABV. And probably best of all, the recommended retail price is 20 quid. Pretty damn good. But even better, it's quite often on offer as low as 18 quid. And that's really a steal. Now, according to Glen Murray, all this combined makes the Elgin Classic light, smooth and easy drinking. So let's find out just how light and smooth that is, just how true that statement is, and we'll get on with the nosing and tasting. But before that, if you've got a bottle of this, go pour yourself some, have a wee dram with me, and we'll share a drink together. Sláinte. Now starting off on the nose, we'll see what we get. It's fruity, it's floral, and it's quite in your face, very fragrant right from the off. I'm getting lots of overtones here of lemon, lemon fondant, lemon cheesecake, lemon butter, lemon grass. There's a wee bit of like a Christmassy feel about it too, like potpourri, like dried flowers. But most of all, what's coming through here in the nose is light, fruity, floral fragrance overall with a good big dose of lemon. So let's give it a taste now and see what we pick up on the palate. Gotcha. Straight off, I'm getting black currant. A bit of a tinge of heat coming along with that, but not too bad given that it's only 40%, but it is there, it is noticeable. And I could almost go as far as saying this would be what I would expect to find in a Ribena hot toddy of all things but without the clove element. And then once it crosses the palate, once you get used to it a wee bit more, here comes the lemon influence again. Interesting first sip, so we'll go in again and see how it develops. Much more lemon to the fore now, but that black currant influence remains. And then I'm also getting a bit of oak butterscotch and a wee touch of a light coffee element as well. Even a wee hint of maybe ginger there as well and a bit of chocolate. Now the mouthfeel, it's a wee bit on the thin side. It's more oily than creamy but like it's almost like it's Poor quality oil, it's like a watered down sort of version. But with that being said, the finish does linger. It goes on probably to the sort of longer end of the medium side. And uh, that finish is more oak, bit of butterscotch again. The fruity, fragrant element to this, the black currant and the lemon. 
are more to the fore on the initial sips, but once the finish uh, goes on, those other elements come in to give it a nice change of direction, but it all works very well together, but it still remains, as the distillery says, it's light, it's fruity, it's a real easy drinker. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like the high proof whiskies. I'm a bit of a proof here. I like the cask strength. I like it non chill filtered. I like natural whiskey straight from the barrel. And as you've probably heard me say quite a few times, a damn good dirty whiskey. Just love it. But that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate whiskies at the other end of the scale as well. And this is the beauty of whiskey. Because you naturally gravitate towards more high-end, high-strength whiskies, doesn't mean that you can't enjoy something a wee bit lighter, a wee bit on the milder fruity floral side instead of the big heavy hitters. And this is what Glen Murray Elgin Classic delivers. It is what the distillery says it is. And that's not a thing that you can say about every whiskey. All in all, this is bloody good stuff that you really can't go wrong. 18, 20 quid for a whiskey of this quality, right? I can't put it in the same category as a lot of other whiskies I've had, but at the same time, I can't find anything wrong with it. It's an easy drinker. It's easy on the wallet. And it's just really one that would be excellent to get somebody into whiskey, as I said earlier. And it's one that I usually have kicking about on my shelf. So with all that being said, in terms of a score, I'm gonna give this a pretty solid 85.5. It really is a whiskey that delivers above its price point. And as I say, one that I have quite regularly, I always keep about, and I don't think I'll ever tire of enjoying it. Now, while this is the signature single malt from Glen Moray, they do have other styles, they do have other ranges, and they're really worth checking out. And I can't wait to try some more Glen Moray a wee bit up through the range, because this is a bloody good starting point, and it bodes well for the others. So, thanks for tuning in, folks. Really appreciate your support. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of the Glen Moray. As always, all the relevant links will be in the description down below. So, please, folks, look after yourselves. And until the next time, stay safe and keep on drinking your whiskey the way you like it. Sláinte. Thanks for watching folks, I really do appreciate it. Please check out these other reviews and if you'd like to support the channel, the best way is by subscribing, liking and commenting. And don't forget to ring that bell for all video notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. Cheers.